They said Turkey was bluffing. That building a fifth-generation stealth jet was for superpowers, not for a country better known for drones and drama. But now the Khan has flown, and the silence from skeptics? Deafening. This is the tactical grid, and today, we're diving into how Turkey just entered the elite club of stealth jet manufacturers, and why that changes the game for everyone else. Let's rewind. The year is 2016. Turkey's F-35 dreams are still alive. It's part of the program. It's investing. It's even making parts. Then comes the S-400 missile deal with Russia. Washington doesn't flinch. It cuts Ankara out of the F-35 program. No jet, no refund, no apology. For most nations, that would have been the end of it. For Turkey, it was ignition. Out of that geopolitical backstab was born a new mission. Build their own fifth-gen jet from scratch. It would be called Khan, a name that means ruler or Khan, a title once carried by emperors who commanded empires from horseback. Now it rides twin engines. This jet doesn't just fly, it rules in name and in mission. Developed by Turkish Aerospace Industries, Khan was no pet project. It became a national obsession, billions of dollars in investment. Decades of planning compressed into a single deadline. Fly and prove them wrong. And in February 2024, Can took off. A 13-minute test flight over Ankara. No escort, no formation showboating. Just one stealth jet carving silence into the sky. It wasn't a prototype anymore. It was real. It was airborne. And it was Turkey's answer to exclusion. Now let's break down what this bird really is and what it's not. Can is a fifth generation stealth fighter built for multi-role supremacy. It features stealth shaping, internal weapons bays, next gen flight control systems, and an AESA radar still in development. Its engines, currently, twin general electric F-110S, used in many F-16 variants. Reliable, proven, but not optimized for what Khan was born to do. Which brings us to the hot topic, the Can fighter jet engine. A lot of eyes are locked on the engine's evolution. Because it's not just about speed or range, it's about independence. Turkey knows the F-110S are borrowed power. That's why Tusis Engine Industries is deep into a domestic power plant. One that would allow Khan to compete head-on with elite stealth jets without relying on afterburners to reach supersonic speeds. Imagine a stealth fighter that achieves Mach-level velocity and dry thrust. That's not just performance, that's stealth endurance. In fact, one of the major engineering goals is for Turkey's Khan fighter jet engine to compete with advanced platforms like the Su-57 and F-22 without using afterburners. Is that possible? Based on latest prototypes, Turkey believes it is. The sophistication of the Khan fighter jet engine being developed is designed not just for raw thrust, but for efficient, sustained power, with thermal signature suppression and advanced composite cooling. Several Turkish defense insiders have stated that the final version of this engine is expected to beat other fifth-gen engines in subsonic efficiency and low observability. And yes, there's growing speculation that KN may ultimately operate without afterburners during combat missions, which would place it in rare company, right next to jets like the F-22 and, in theory, the Su-57. Is it capable of defeating both? Not in a Hollywood dogfight, but in terms of operational range, internal fuel capacity, stealth profile, and modern architecture, KN is building the case to compete, especially in contested airspace where radar avoidance matters more than pure thrust. So if you're searching for the latest development in Turkey's Khan fighter jet engine, this is it. A stealth engine designed for 5 the Gen Doctrine, future AI collaboration, and eventually, export compatibility. Khan is a symbol of Turkish defense maturity, but its engine? That's the future power source of an entire strategy, and it's being built with one goal, beat the embargo, and beat expectations. Back to the jet. KN will eventually carry Gokdogan and Bozdogan air-to-air missiles, plus Samje cruise missiles for deep strike, all stored internally. Radar, targeting, and electronic warfare systems are being co-developed by Asselson and Havelson, the same firms behind Turkey's drone ecosystem. KN isn't replacing drones, it's commanding them. The vision is clear. One Ka'an jet orchestrating a full suite of loyal wingmen. Unmanned fighters, AI targeting, swarm tactics. You're looking at the foundation of a Turkish next-gen kill web. Now let's zoom out. Why did Indonesia, a country thousands of kilometers away, just sign a $10 billion deal for 48 Ka'an jets? Because this jet is more than metal. It's independence, it's deterrence, it's options. Indonesia already flies Rafales. It's working on the KF-21 with South Korea. Now it's adding CAN to the hangar. They're not stacking inventory, they're stacking leverage. Ka'an gives them a fifth-gen edge, 
without needing U.S. approval codes or Russian maintenance delays. And here's what matters. This isn't just about Indonesia. More nations are watching. More nations are asking, what if we could skip the superpower permission slip? Khan is the answer to that question. Of course, it's not perfect. It still flies with imported engines. Its stealth coding isn't mature yet. Its avionics are evolving, and its production capacity needs serious ramp up. But none of that stops it from being real. Khan flies, it trains, it sells. That alone puts it ahead of half the program still stuck in PowerPoint purgatory. The bottom line? Khan is no longer a promise. It's a platform. And for countries tired of asking Washington, Moscow, or Beijing, Khan is a fourth option. Its name means ruler, and in the fifth gen world, that name isn't just poetic, it's prophetic. This is the tactical grid. Tactics, tech, truth. Subscribe for more air power. Delivered with attitude.